to George questions to the Minister for Regional Development. We now move to topical questions to the Minister. And I call Tom Elliott. Mr Elliott. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. And uh, given the, the news this week of the death of former South African President uh, Nelson Mandela, I'm wondering if the Minister for Regional Development will be in attendance at the funeral or if the Executive will be officially represented there. Grateful to the uh, member for his uh, topical question. Um, can, I, can I say um, there, there, there's been no executive guidance uh, on, on uh, uh, the uh, arrangements, the funeral arrangements of, of Nelson Mandela, um, and I'm able to uh, confirm that no discussion uh, has taken place at executive level uh, through written correspondence or whatever uh, on uh, the funeral arrangements and executive uh, representation. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister uh, for that. I, I noted in press reports that the Deputy First Minister was going to officially represent the Executive. Can he give us some information on that uh, report? Well, again, I'm grateful to the, to the member for his uh, supplementary question. Um, I, I had uh, initially, it had been my understanding that. Um, uh, Martin McGuinness had been attending the funeral in a personal capacity. Um, and of course, the member will uh, know that uh, th this House had the opportunity to pay due tribute uh, to the passing of, of, of Mr. Mandela uh, yesterday morning um, uh, in the Assembly. Uh, I'm not uh, aware of what approach is being taken on the funding of his uh, attendance. Uh, nor am I aware of the position being adopted by either the Scottish or the Welsh First Ministers. Uh, I, my understanding is that four former, uh, pri former Prime Ministers uh, and the current Prime Minister and the Prince of Wales are to attend and to represent the United Kingdom uh, as a whole. Uh, many people, uh, I think, across Northern Ireland will understandably feel that it's not appropriate uh, for the Deputy First Minister to attend alone. Uh, purporting to represent Northern Ireland, and uh, I certainly find myself sympathetic uh, to that position. Uh, now that we've also learned that Mr. Gerry Adams will attend uh, some events doesn't improve that situation. Um, I'm also unaware as to whether the First Minister declined an invitation to attend and unaware whether he was content uh, and agreed to the, to the Deputy First Minister representing uh, the Executive or uh, the people of Northern Ireland. To, to the whole house. Members should go and read standing orders or topical questions. I mean, topical questions need to relate to the minister's responsibility within the department. And I don't know, with the funeral of Nelson Mandela, and how that fits in order, order how that fits into the responsibility of the regional development minister. So I'm just warning the whole house: topical questions need to be need to be uh, on the responsibility that the minister has within his. Department. Order. Order. Fry McCann. Mr McCann. Uh, the Minister will be aware that the TNT Open Day takes place on the 13th of December. Uh, has he, the Commission released any details of the preferred criteria? Grateful to the Member for his uh, supplementary question. Uh, and indeed, the Member will know that uh, I have engaged substantially uh, with um, my counterparts in uh, the European Union, uh, 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 Vice President Callas. Uh, and other senior representatives. Um, the, the chair of the Transport Committee, uh, Brian Simpson, has been particularly helpful, as indeed have other members, uh, have the Northern Ireland uh, MEPs, uh, in respect of all of these issues. Um, I'm uh, pleased with the progress that we've been able to make in respect of the 10 t proposals. Uh, we, we didn't win uh, every, every battle, but substantially. Uh, I share the, um, the view of my, my counterpart in the Irish Republic that uh, uh, with the challenges that we were faces, uh, that, that faced us uh, in relation to 10 t uh, that we have come through it uh, pretty well. Mr McCann. I think the, the, the Minister is aware that several members of the committee will be travelling uh, to this event. Uh, does the, his department have any suitable projects lined up uh, to max, maximise the potential drawdown of funds? Grateful to the, the member for his supplementary question and on an ongoing basis. My officials seek to identify suitable projects whereby uh, we can um, uh, attain uh, grant aid. Grant aid uh, for, for the projects themselves, um, opportunities appear to be uh, a little bit more limited 
uh, but certainly uh, the funding of, of studies uh, and various uh, consultation uh, exercises and the preparatory work for a lot of important schemes can, um, uh, can, can, uh, uh, can avail of uh, EU funding. Uh, and we'll seek to do that uh, as a consequence, not only of, of next week, but um, as we move into 2014. Miller. Mr. Miller. Well, good uh, Kim Collier. Thank you, um, Mr. Speaker. Could I ask the, uh, the Minister, door-to-door -door transport ended on the 31st of March uh, 2013, with Disability Action now providing interim uh, transport services across the north. Uh, what are the long-term plans for this service? I'm grateful to the member um, for uh, Coming into uh, topical questions, uh, he, he was unfortunately absent uh, for the detailed answer that I had uh, uh, for uh, oral questions. But anyway, um, uh, disability action uh, continue uh, to provide uh, disability action transport services uh, with grant support from the department. Um, it's an interim schemes, uh, a scheme until such time uh, as the department considers how best to address the transport needs for people with disabilities. Um, and of course, the member will know that there has been no reduction uh, in the budget uh, to uh, the door-to-door -door service since it uh, ceased on the 31st of March 2013. Ian Miller. Um, thank you, uh, Minister, for your answer thus far. Um, but it doesn't really. Could you tell me then when it might give us a time frame as to when the service might be restored? You know, because if interim. Uh, uh, Disability Action is now doing the interim uh, service. You know, surely dis disability needs to know: uh, are there going to be extra funding available for them, or, or whatever? Grateful to the member for his supplementary question. Uh, I think uh, I, I, I can. Uh, I hope I've been able to allay his concerns about uh, any reduction in funding. There hasn't been a, a reduction in funding. Um, Simply, um, what we're assessing, what we're uh, continuing to look at, is how best we can provide this service. It's currently being provided by Disability Action, um, and uh, we're looking at, at, you know, into the longer term, uh, as to should we continue uh, in that way, uh, and if not, how do we tweak it? How do we improve it? Uh, rather than it's not a question of cutting it, uh, and, and certainly the. Uh, the important thing is that it has not uh, been reduced uh, in its budget spend, and uh, we're satisfied at the, way, uh, at the way it's been handled at the moment. But of course, um, we need to give ongoing consideration to these things. McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If the minister was listening to Radio Ulster this morning, he would have heard of the very uh, sincere worries from our senior citizens about the threat to the senior smart card. Um, will the minister? Um, support the hands-off campaign and will he give a categoric guarantee to this assembly that the smart card will remain come hell or high water? I'm very grateful to the member for his supplementary question and I note he didn't uh, indicate a, a personal interest. Um, but um, let me say I, I, I am aware of the benefit, the huge benefits, the huge benefits of the concessionary uh, uh, travel. Uh, uh, system that we have. I think uh, it is greatly used. It allows uh, a great many people to, to travel. It, uh, I think uh, it improves social uh, interchange. And I think there is also huge benefit to the local economy as people uh, undertake journeys. And let me say, um, under my watch, let me be absolutely clear, under my watch, I don't intend to fundamentally overhaul or uh, the, uh, the, the concessionary scheme that we have. And, uh, and I hope that that will give considerable comfort to, uh, to the campaigners uh, who are out there, who I understand their concerns. But not under my watch, not under an Ulster Unionist, uh, will there be uh, 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 a cutting or a withdrawal of, of the services that are available under the concessionary, current concessionary transport system. Yeah, yeah. McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm delighted that the Minister has given a commitment under his watch that this senior smart pass will, uh, smart pass will remain. Uh, that's very welcome. And I, I, I think, along with the Minister, would um, applaud this Assembly for instigating. There is, Mr. Speaker, 
Uh, we all take credit for the uh, instigation of a smart pass for our senior citizens in Northern Ireland. Would the Minister agree with me that without the smart pass, uh, a lot of senior citizens would be housebound, they would be out of uh, order, they would be out of uh, sequence, they would be a drain on our health service because of the uh, lack of movement without the smart pass? Grateful to the, to, to, to the member for his um, comments, and, and, and I do agree. I, I think the concession refer scheme and the smart pass uh, have afforded people the opportunity uh, to, 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 uh, to reach out into the wider community, to remain active within the, in the wider community. Uh, and I think, whilst success is many fathers, uh, I think all of us uh, can take pride uh, in, in the fact that we are uh, treating our senior citizens particularly. Uh, in this fashion. One would always want to do more. One would seek to try uh, and improve it, as undoubtedly we will. But we are um, also mindful of, of the costs involved. But nevertheless, it's a scheme that's working. It's a scheme that's popular. And I have no plans to overhaul it. Question number five and topical. Stephen Agnew is not in his place. Uh, David Hillage. Mr Hillage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and continuing Mr. McCarthy's uh, theme of hell or high water, could I ask the Minister of an assessment of sandbag provision in relation to road service and NI water, as uh, some of us during the recent storm uh, period uh, experienced some difficulties? Grateful to the, uh, to the member for his uh, uh, supplementary, uh, for his topical question. Um, obviously, we are into uh, winter. Uh, and uh, we're mindful that whilst the conditions at the moment uh, appear to be very mild, um, we can take nothing for granted, uh, and that's certainly the case uh, as we go forward. Um, the, the, the member will know that um, the issue of sandbags uh, is one that, with the cooperation of, of, of local councils, uh, my department uh, has been working to achieve uh, progress on that. Uh, I'm always interested to hear uh, if there are difficulties um, in, in particular areas, but generally uh, I, I want to see and I want to welcome the, coordinated, the increasing coordinated approach between my department and its agencies and uh, local government on it. Uh, I think we should, as uh, this is the last opportunity um, formally that we know of that the House will meet, and perhaps my last opportunity to, to, to say in the House. Uh, as to how much uh, we appreciate the efforts of those who will be providing winter services, those who will be watching the clock, watching the weather forecast, not perhaps able to enjoy fully uh, the, the, the Christmas hospitality with their families, and the over 300 staff plus the, the private operators who will seek to provide a public service to the people of Northern Ireland by keeping the roads open and by keeping people safe, and, uh, and I want to pay a tribute in advance to those, to the efforts of everyone concerned. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I welcome the uh, Minister's words on the Department's arrangements with local councils. Can the, can the Minister ensure that all sections are on message and all, all sections of the Department, particularly in the Eastern Division, as we approach that time? Happy, uh, happy to give that assurance, and, uh, and I know that the, the, the staff, uh, particularly in, in uh, my department and, and its agencies are geared up uh, and adopt a very professional attitude, and I'm pleased that um, increasingly good relationships uh, now exist with local councils. Uh, and I hope very much that as we approach uh, the, the, the heavy winter, then uh, we can work together successfully. Thank you very much indeed. Members, that concludes questions on those regional development.